I received a phone call from a sister that my husband is passing away. Again, here in Sunderland. Not very far, maybe a, a mile from this masjid. So we attend. And this brother, mashallah, and I'm very well aware, he has many, many properties in Sunderland. Many shops, commercial properties, homes. He has loads of properties. As we entered into his gated property, we found vintage cars. We had vintage facilities on site. We entered his home, mashallah, a grand location. As we entered in his home, Bless his wife, she was very hospitable. She welcomed us, we went in, and we sat beside the dying, and we went to visit the dying brother. Doing talaqeen as Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has advised us that do talaqeen upon your dying. Remind them of la ilaha illallah. Remind them of akhirah, so that they do not slip at the last moments. So the fellow brother, lo and behold, passed away. After he passed away, he had two sons, and a and a wife. Both the sons, of course, when these situations happen, as Imams, we have to deal with these situations. We need a point of contact in the family, a next of kin. Because authorities will not allow us to bury an individual without the next of kin. So the elder son, he was, mashallah, engaging. And he said, Imam, I will do everything that is required. Money isn't a problem. Please, and these are the words, have a peaceful setting up for my father. I knew straight away that this is a is a risky situation. The moment he used a non-Muslim terminology of a nice setting up for my father, I straight away understood the culture and the environment of the home. Then the second son came up to me crying. And he said, Sheikh, I will do everything that is required. I will follow the mayyid to the masjid. I will follow the mayyid to the graveyard. I will place soil on the father of my father, on my father. Imam, I will do everything that I will I need to. The only thing that I cannot do is pray Salatul Janazah. So I said to him, why? I said, young man, why? Why? Your father was a very reputable member of our society, a good, successful business, businessman. He did so much. He said, and listen to this. He said, Imam, Alhamdulillah, I have an, edu Kamaqal, I have an education. Alhamdulillah, my father has set us up well. We've gone to university. We've done a lot of good things. But very recently, I became a murtad and I let go of Islam. I have rejected Allah and his Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And I do not believe in this identity and this culture and religion of Islam. So he was a good boy. However, the point is that he has lost his belief in Allah and his Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Why? Why has that been the case? A number of different reasons. Either the family home did not have that environment. The young boys did not see their father praying. It may be that the father figure was always missing, always busy at work. The mother figure is not around, busy at work. Everybody is busy, no time to give to the children, to the growing children, the generation. And then there may be that they became adults. The parents thought my responsibility is finished. As long as they bring a thousand pounds at the end of the week, that's sufficient. Maybe it's, a, it's the case that they had forgotten that their responsibility lies until the last moments. Even if their children and their boys and their girls grow gray hair, become grown men and women, the responsibility does not end. And sadly, we did exactly this. We washed this uncle's body. We, we shrouded him and then we buried him. And that young boy followed me all the way. And I'll give it to him. He followed me all the way. He stayed with me all the way until the last handful of soil we put over his father. But throughout the process, he did not pray Salatul Janazah. He could not pray upon his father by saying, Rabbi Rahamhuma Kama Rabbayani Sagira. He could not make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because he did not believe Allah in the first place. My brothers and my sisters, this, this topic is so important. So important that I cannot exaggerate to you any further. And it all starts from me and you. It all starts from us. We have to take the first step. We have to take the initiative. We have to grow our home, our culture, our identity, our behavior, our religious practices. We have to take that first step. You take the first step and Allah will make the whole road easy for you. You make the initial stages, Allah will show you routes and make you roads that you cannot comprehend and think of. 